Christy and I'm from Shoreline Community College and today I'm going to show you how to use the NMR. So first of all you have to make sure your air supply is on. So first thing you have to do is lift up this lever right here and your air supply is on. So now we can go over to the 60 megahertz NMR and I can show you how to prepare your sample tube. So first of all, here's the sample tube and here is your spinner. So I'm going to apply the spinner in this direction on the tube and then I use the depth gauge to make sure it's placed correctly on the tube. And now you have to take a Kim wipe and wipe off the tube. A little bit more rough down on the glass and more gently on the spinner. And now you're ready to put your sample in the compartment. So. I'll lift up the door and then I'll turn the air, air on, spinner, and by putting the dial down and I will drop the tube down below. So now you have to check with a flashlight to see if it's spinning. And the best way to tell is if you can see a black dot, that means it's not spinning. But if you don't see one, it's spinning. And right now it's definitely not spinning. So I place my thumb over and then I check again. So now I have it spinning. So now you close the compartment door. So now you're going to acquire um, under the H1 acquisition tab. So I'll just click on that. I go down to ACQ, left click, and now it's going to ask you for a file name. So you can give it a name, and I'm just going to stick with this default that I have here. I'm going to save, and then now um, the receiver gain is being adjusted, and that's so after you have acquired, now you can open up the NUT software through the NMR tab down here. I'm going to click on that and you'll get this icon up here and you just click OK. And then I go to the open file tab here, or not tab, it's just I just click on that icon. And in this case, you'll just open up the file that you saved and I'm going to open up this temporary file, click open, and I have this vector here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go under view and I'm going to start the zoom operation and so I go under this tab view and then I click on view. And then what I do is I take the left mouse button and I drag it over the entire spectrum with the left mouse button and then I right click it. And as you can see it zooms in on our uh, spectra. So to exit out of Zio, make sure you do this. You have to go under File and then Exit Zio. So now you're out of the Zoom function, and now we can go under Process, and we can do Phasing, and I'm going to click on Auto Phase. And then you don't have to click out of anything from there. Now I'm going to go down to Baseline Correct under the Process tab again. I'm going to click on that. And then that's done. So now I can do, I can go under the same tab, process, and I'm going to click on fit baseline, which is the FB. And it's going to bring up this funky uh, screen here. So all I'm going to do is take the left mouse button and click over the red portions because I want to make sure the spectra I want is doesn't have any red covering it. So that all looks good. And then I'm just going to click around it and make sure I get all that in there. The only time you don't and you cover it with the red is the TMS, which will be at the zero mark. And you just use your left mouse button. So now I'm done with that, I'm going to go up to Edit, and I'm going to click on Calculate Fit by Least Square Polynomial, which is L. I'm going to click on that, and that will change your values for the polynomial coefficients. And then I'm going to click on Apply Correction and Exit FB. So that gets you out of that uh, fit baseline function. So now I'm ready to do peak picking, and that's PP. So I'm going to click on that under all under the Process tab. And that shows these values right up here. So then I can go under Process again, and now I'm ready to integrate. And that's Integrate Display. I'm going to click on that. And you'll get this kind of gross thing here. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to take the left mouse button. I'm going to click twice on the left side of the peak. I'm going to click once on the right side. I'll lift the left mouse button. And I'm going to continue doing that for each peak. So I'm going to do that real quick. And 
And the only one I don't do it for is the TMS because I really just don't care about that right now. So still in the uh, ID function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to left mouse click on a middle peak. You might want to ask your instructor if there is a value that they would like you to place on this. Um, so left click and then I'm going to type in V. This is the only time you're going to type in something. And it'll bring up this uh, icon here. So in this case, I'm just going to put in two. And then I'm going to click or press enter. And here are your values. So now it's not all messy again. So um, now I'm ready to print. And just make sure the printer is on. And I can click on the print icon up here. And it should print out your spectra. Like any time now. Well, but now I'm going to show you how to remove it from the compartment. And you open up the compartment door. And all you have to do is turn the dial up. And your tube will come straight up. And you can remove it. will come straight up. And you can remove. Turn the dial back to halfway and then close the compartment door.